So the dish is just made from some just standard normal plywood. It, I mean, it's jungle, so it's marine ply, so it doesn't doesn't rot. But if it's not going to get wet, it doesn't need to be. Uh, we've got a small cell chicken wire in here, which is just standard chicken wire, and then just uh, just cable ties, just zip ties to um to pull that mesh tight to the to the paraboloidal um, shape. So making these like these slats is super easy. Just you just mark out the box. There's the um the full tutorial on on uh, the website, which the link is to in the description of the video. To get the parabolic curve, uh, I just um as is sort of spelled out in the tutorial, just hang like a, a light chain of a fixed length between between two points, and that'll hang in a catenary curve, which at this kind of um, focus is about is very very similar to a parabola. So and then you spray paint over over that chain and then jigsaw out the um, you know the shadow that it uh, that it leaves. And that's it pretty much. So both of these dishes um, took me about one day to make the to make the frame but that's like an easy day. And then another easy day to get the, the mesh and there's a whole the, the cost of all of this is about twenty dollars per dish I guess. Um, I mean less really because we already had the plywood on site, but if we bought it new, that's about what that would come to. The um, only other materials is two bits of string, which um, pull tight, and that's that's the focus. So the things like designs that you know it gives you the focus where the string meets, and that also gives you like a hard point to to mount your whatever on. So the, the setup here would be having like an adapter like this or like a phone or something and then like a like a f either like have if it was a phone broadcasted out through um, Wi-Fi tethering or, or Bluetooth tethering or a USB cable you can get these up to five meters length before it starts to become like too long run that in through a window patch that into like a laptop or something and then patch that into the Wi-Fi card in the laptop and broadcast it out into the rest of the house so all those devices connect through that one laptop through the dish bam um, through the air gap and then into the, the, the internet connection at the other end. So we're getting about um, 57 uh, decibels signal there, which is very good for hundreds of meters of trees. Um, we're also picking up someone's phone. I don't know who that is, but they're a long way away, whoever they are. And then we've got a good enough connection that you know, can load Facebook pretty much as quickly as if this was like in the house with the router. Like the speed that that's going is pretty much the speed of the internet connection, like because um, it's a little bit uh, dodgy into the top house as it is. This is the dish that we've got up at the main house. Uh, it's got the router in the focus of it. Uh, and since this is over the back end of the house, um, anything that comes out the front of the router gets broadcast through the house so it doesn't get chopped by the dish. But the rest of the half of the signal just gets just spotlighted out towards the second house, which is about 300 meters that way. So also having the main house broadcasting pretty much over the entire property means that as other houses get built here, they'll be able to tap into that signal as well. Um, and basically just have like full high speed broadband internet in the jungle in Panama and if we, if we can make it work here then theoretically it should work pretty much anywhere. So the dish wasn't really something that was like a project itself. I was in New Zealand working on a greenhouse project uh, in the Kanata community where my father lives in a very remote part of New Zealand and um, so we needed the internet to work on that project. So we borrowed this uh, mobile USB like internet dongle from a guy like uh, who lived there as well and then like drove round the, the, the property with um with like me leaning out the window of the car with like the dongle with like a like a frying pan, like a wok as like um as a reflector dish plugged into my laptop and managed to get like enough signal to see that like you know we could connect with a better reflector. So then just drew up a like a sign for that in, in my CAD package and like um worked out that small cell chicken wire would be like you know would be a small enough mesh size to reflect the, the signal as a solid surface. But all the, all the cuts that we did with that first version, we didn't think we had like a jigsaw, so like all of all of those cuts were done with that, which took like 
hours and like killed about four of us. And then um, like Pete, the young guy who lived up the hill, came in and was like, oh, you should have used our jigsaw that we've got at home. Like, um, we'll just leave that to you. And like, just, yeah, okay, thanks for that. That would have been really useful about four hours ago. It worked really well. We just chucked it on a five meter cable and like put it outside the, the common house, just leaning against the wall, like pointed at a tree, didn't bother to optimize it at all. And we're getting like 100 kilobits per second through the thing. Um, and then sort of, yeah, patched that through my laptop into the rest of the, into the, rest of the, the building, Wi-Fi wise. And um, so I've tested this. I've made uh, these in Spain. Um, I got four and a half kilometers range with line of sight, just to some basic home network at the other end. Um, made them in Tibet, in, uh, in Ladakh, in the high Himalayas, um, a place called Sekmol. We were gonna build, beam like internet from Spatuk Monastery up to Sekmol down the end of some um, river valley, which is like seven and a half kilometers with a dish at each end, like we've got here. Um, and they, like taught the local guys how to, how to make the dishes so they can make more of them. Because um, there was one guy who really wanted to do it because he had, he lives like this really remote village, like even by Ladakhi standards, like super remote. But they just built a cell phone tower, um, which he thought would be visible like 40 kilometers away from the top of the mountain, like above the village. So the, the plan was that it'd make like a couple for the village and then like put it up on the top of the mountain and like people going up and like, you know, taking the livestock up the mountain with like, like a bag of phones, put that in the dish, feed the animals and stuff, all the, you know, SMSs and all that sort of stuff, you know, sends and receives, grab the bag, take it back down and, and, and hand everybody's phones out again. Um, so yeah, it's, I mean, it wasn't meant to be a project in and of itself, but it has been like really effective and it's gotten quite a lot of interest. So we've, uh, we've installed it here in Panama to, uh, to bring internet to the Panamanian jungle. And so far that seems to be working out really well.